do that first. I'm a little discombobulated today. Okay, today we have, uh, well first of all I'd like to welcome everybody to this meeting of the Rotary Club of Greenville. And it looks like we have a packed house again. We love that. Thank y'all. Um, today we have Larry, is it Mace, doing prayer. Ted Bolts doing the pledge, CJ Crawford, four-way test, and David Wyland the song. Yeah, we pray. We, Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together this, this afternoon, Lord, to, to uplift you, Lord, and to uplift this community. Let us be the, the, the servants, Lord, that, and that help and do what we need to do. But Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll bless the food that we've had before us, Lord, and, and we ask you to not just use that to nourish our bodies. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for <coughs> us from each and every day, Lord. You take us and you get us up and you take us through our lives, and we thank you so much for that. In your name, amen. 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 Join me in the place, our great flag. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join me in the four way test. It doesn't happen to be out there. Of the things we think we do first, is, is it the truth? truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And it's our custom on the first uh, Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday morning, Wednesday <laughs> well, noon, meeting out of, it. <laughs> gotcha. of the month, we celebrate birthdays. All right. And I have examined our birthday oh. list for the month of March, <laughs> and this gentleman is the only one present. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, join me in celebrating with my good friend Jim Sandy. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Number 82. All right, it looks like we have some. Um, so nice that he was up front there. Or did you get to go up front? Do you want to go ahead and announce the other guests that you have? Sure. You want me to uh, introduce my guests? I am delighted to have several guests with me today. Miss Goggins, raise your hand. Stand up, please. She's a teacher at Bowles. Proud of her. Uh, Jill Thomason is the high school principal at Bowles. And this lady is my successor at Bowles ISD, Michael Goss. Welcome there. Okay. And Willie has a couple as well. I brought Mr. Jerry Clancy. He's the CEO, uh, former CEO from Lone Star Credit Unit. He retired just September about a year ago. And he's a good friend of mine and um, still a good friend for Lone Star Credit Union. And this is Mr. Theo Hughes. He's with the EAA. I will let him tell you a little bit more. Is he scheduled to speak today? Is, uh, no, not oh, today. Okay. Uh, EAA, Mr. Hughes, is the Experimental Aircraft Association, is yes, that correct? Right? I'm, I'm president of the chapter. All right. Hey, thank you for being well, with us today. Welcome, y'all. Do we have any other visitors that I've missed today? No. Miss Goss actually plans to become a member of Rotary in May. Yeah. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and move on to Happy Bucks and Deck of Destiny. Okay, who is really happy? We've already got money in the air. Got money in the air. Who is really happy to be here today? Here, I probably need to dig out another one. Debbie's really happy. Holy no help. Yeah. <laughs> well, while she's looking, we'll see. Okay, okay, you're in. I'm going to put in two. Okay. I'm happy and I do thank our Savior above that the auction is over. <laughs> Almost. I have only about five or six more items that need to be picked up. But anybody and everybody who stayed on nearly nine o'clock to help close the auction, I want y'all to stand up. Everybody deserves an applause. I thank y'all so much. Uh, Gloria. Um, of course, Katie, they cleaned the dining room too, but um, 
this was one of the things kind of left off the sheet, so I have to kind of really push and recruit people, but I want to thank you all so, so much. And of course, for this precious ring we're giving you. There we go. What you got, CJ? It's my, my dirt needed to be watered. There you go. Just a quick reminder, Northeast Texas Choral Society concert, first weekend in May, is a gospel concert this year. So if you like gospel music, and you like really, really big groups singing it, then uh, come to Sulphur Springs for it. No, I, I, I forgot about the auction. Um, the activity is, volu the volunteer activity sheets are on your desk. I mean, your tables. You guys, please record your hours that you went and collected and solicited items and tickets and other things like that because that can go on the sheet, and I think a lot of people have forgot that. Thanks. Does everybody know what those Answer. sheets are for? No. Tell us. That is a collective for everybody in our club, whether you're volunteering for Rotary, whether it's the Chamber of Commerce, whether it's another nonprofit, whether it's... Uh, you go and to the hospital and volunteer. It doesn't matter. It's it's volunteer community service volunteer hours, and we collect those. And at the end of the year, at the end of my year, which is June 30th, that is all reported to Rotary International. And so we're competing against. Every, well, I shouldn't say competing. I'm a competitive person, but those are going to be recorded against every other club in our district. So this is a big deal for us. This is a really big deal. Please do not. I mean, obviously, you're not going to over report, but don't skimp on your hours. You guys are out there. I see it on Facebook. Holy smokes. We've got the most active club I've ever seen. And so please make sure to report all of your hours for every bit of community service you're doing. Okay, as we go, how about Larry Mays? <laughs> I'm, I'm happy that it's uh, past uh, Chili Fest and we can all get back to the next day which is what, the backfire? All right. All right. The next activity is the new president. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not for us. <laughs> John's had to do a job we're holding you over. I got kind of a strange observation that I began having about an hour, maybe an hour and a half ago now. Um, during the board meeting, we just had our, we have a board meeting the first week of every month, and I was thinking during that board meeting, I was looking around the room. I am just delighted to serve on board with these ladies and gentlemen, and they've got the best interest of this community and and the underserved under uh, served citizens at heart. And I was just looking around and thinking about what a pleasure it is to be that group of people that are so genuine in what they do. That's it. Thank you. I just, I'm so happy that about the Chili Fest, I had lunch there and I had dinner there. And I, had, <laughs> uh, I, brought, I brought people, one friend from, uh, from uh, Commerce, and then I brought my daughter for the evening. It was just so nice, and I met Larry Green's family and had dinner with them. And I'm just so happy that, you know, it was just such a wonderful event. It made me feel a little closer to Greenville. And also I wanted to uh, say, and, and the second reason I'm happy is because this week, my daughter and I are doing a lot of home repairs, and we found a wonderful uh, repair person who's been there all week doing things. And so I, that's why I'm kind of dressed like this today. I just came from Lowe's picking up more stuff. So anyway, thank you all so much. It was a great event. Thank you. Bernadette, why don't you tell them why you had to come back for dinner? Why did I have to come back for dinner? You got hungry, I guess. Because you had to check on your auction items. And That's right, yeah. <laughs> at first, I was just going to stay home because I did my auction items in the, at the lunchtime. And then Katie said, you better come back at 6 o'clock to make sure they're still available. And let me tell you, we went home with a car full. So anyway, thank you. <laughs> Including this, whoops, this bracelet. This is the. <laughs> oh, nice. Sorry, Thomas. Okay. Hey, Alan. Just bringing you over for I'm just happy. Well, I, I, today it's uh, my turn to cook supper, and there's leftover chili, and that's what we're having. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> this is my sister. You guys? Uh oh, oh Katie's got something going on. I got my own mic. It's okay. okay. I am happy because. Hunt Regional Healthcare, the hospital system is amazing. I have been living there for the last two days. 
and it has been absolutely wonderful. So if you have not recently been able or had even any reason to partake of their services, don't hesitate to do so because it has been the most amazing um, experience with my mom for the last two days. So congratulations, Rich, you, you're doing a great job. Thank you, dear. I'm happy 65 years ago I got married. The only problem is my wife I ain't here anymore to celebrate with me. Okay. Larry's got something. We've got a big five here, so. Ooh, uh, big uh, news. Well, not real big, but another uh, thread go concert. It's on St. Patrick's Day night. I wish I could say if you wore green, you got in free, but I don't think it works that way. But um, so anybody remember um, the Blues Brothers movie? Yeah. Okay. So anybody remember when they went to Bob's Country? I think it was called Bob's Country Bunker, right? Is that what it was called? Yeah. So they got out of Winnebago, and I think somewhere along the line that the phrase was, you know, we played both kinds of music, country and western. So, okay, so this show is going to be like that because we've got western swing from the Quavy sisters, who are nice. three sisters, sing great harmonies, play, all play fiddle, and they sound great. And then Mandy Barnett, who's uh, done a lot of Patsy Cline's work over the years, she's going to do a classic country with uh, Eddie Arnold and... Um, Ray Price and just music that you know she's going to cover. She's a really, really good kind of a torch uh, cabaret type singer. So anyway, March seventeenth, tickets at the GMA. Thank she's you. Do Rawhide. Yeah, that right. right. <laughs> March seventeenth on that. So anyway, Chili Fest kind of took the uh, uh, place of uh, last Wednesday's meeting. Otherwise, I would have said then, "Hey, we've got that grandbaby in now, so it's all good." Uh, <laughs> Four eyes wide open and uh, six pounds, 1.2 something ounces, uh, 20 and a half inches, so long, and uh, monkey toes, by the way. And, uh, but calm. She uh, gets up only four times a night for 15 minute feedings, goes right back to sleep. So, parents got off easy. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be here today because I really wanted to stay in bed because it was raining and I'm really, really tired. But um, Annette was not feeling well and she asked me to come uh, take notes as a secretary. And I got to buy my ticket, so I'm going to win today. Yeah. 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 What were you at doing last night? Was it election? Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I missed telling my happy buck last week, but uh, the week before I was in St. Paul, Minnesota, at my soon-to-be mother for the first time daughter's house, putting in a dishwasher where they've never been one, this old house, been working for two days on it, and when I was about to give up under the sink trying to get this pipe loose, suddenly my son-in-law's friend shows up, who's a licensed high-back guy, HVAC, and a plumber, and this and that, and he says, give me those wrenches. And pretty soon he had a new breaker put in, and the plumbing hooked up, and the dishwasher was turned on and running. So I'm happy. Right. Anybody else? Anybody else? I'm working the room. Everybody good. All right. Deck of Destiny? All right. We're talking some big bucks today. <coughs> Kami's going to draw the ticket today. She's behind the camera all the time. You're going to make her come out from behind the camera? So let me go ahead and just cross this one off the announcements. The person who just won is Chris Fowler, our newest Rotarian who turned turn in her application today. Yeah. 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 she was already
be a Rotarian because if you don't know, she worked the entire water and tea station over here all by herself for the entire lunch rush for Chili Fest last week. So she is a true Rotarian at heart already, y'all. It's just perfect timing, Lisa. Yeah. Don't you get me on there? We go. <laughs> Okay, so she's the ace of spades. spades. Watch it. If she ace wins, she gets spades. a ball there. Oh, ace. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. 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 Oh. oh. No. Close to a thousand. Let's go ahead and lift. It's about a thousand dollars. I think it's a little over. Maybe a little over. Okay, I'm going to um, hurry, hurry while he's putting that up. Uh, just real quick, I want to do this very quickly because then we're, we've got some four way speech to, uh, speeches coming up today. And then we're going to have all of the rest of our announcements. This thing is always. Where's the other? Grab the other one. Um, we're going to have our other announcements and um, student of the month and such afterwards because we need to allow time for the judges who will be judging the four-way speech contest. We need to allow them time at the end to go back and deliberate and decide on winners today. So um, we're going to flip things a little bit backwards, but I wanted to go ahead and show you this so I can get it off of the screen. So in case you didn't know, and most, most people didn't know, um, there was actually a second fundraiser going on last week. The, we had Chili Fest, and that was great and, and fun and everything, but um, this one was going on at Bowie Elementary, and they call it Penny Wars, and it's basically where they have, each grade level has their own bucket of money, and that particular grade level wants to put pennies in their own bucket because pennies are positive points, and they want to put nickels, dimes, quarters, and dollar bills in the other grade level's buckets, so those are negative points, right? So Friday afternoon, Alliance Bank thankfully allowed us to use the coins order for free. They, they actually were, um, were doing this all last week. So the entire week, they were collecting coins all for polio. So 100% of what they have raised is coming back to our club. I was hoping Husway would be here because he, he is. Uh, where is he? Okay, did, did it come out what we thought? It came out a little more. A little more, okay. Um, they literally brought bags and bags and bags and bags, individual penny bags versus nickel quarter dimes bags. Um, that sounds really bad, doesn't it? Nickel dimes. <laughs> 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 Uh, bags and then uh, separate dollar bills into Alliance Bank and we and, and we help sort them and add them up and I want to tell you all something this was totally amazing they did an amazing job there was actually four Rotarians that went the week before and talked to each and every class about who Rotary is why what polio is what we're doing and why we're we're raising money for this and y'all this was incredible $1,439 that they raised last week in pennies, nickels, and dimes. Can you believe that? So way to go, Bowie Elementary. We thank them enormously. And, um, and I actually sent uh, Brad out there to do a story on them, Brad Keller from Carol Banner, and it was front page news on Saturday. So this was amazing, and, and uh, we need to thank everybody from Bowie Elementary to, for participating in that. I'll take care of it. Yeah, we put the screen up. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and invite Kami up so she can announce our contestants. Okay, so today's four-way speech, and um, the great thing about this is, is that these students have worked so hard. They, um, we've been talking for the last couple of weeks and perfecting things and getting them ready for this moment. And um, I'm super proud of the hard work that they've done and I'm proud that they're able to get up here in front of us and um, share their speech that they've prepared because public speaking isn't easy. So um, they're already winners. They've already done a great job. They will already be receiving a scholarship from the Rotary Club. And um, today we're just gonna decide who's gonna go and do it in front of a bigger crowd at the district meeting. So um, we'll tell you all about the students after it's over, but for now, number contestant number one, if you would share your speech with us. So to start off, um, can I please just get a 
show of hands of how many of you say you scroll through Facebook at least once a day. So can I also get another show of hands that would say you see like a story of a bad kid on Facebook stacking up? Yeah, we're gonna have to tell you Yeah. Speak more into the mic. Go ahead, try that. Is that better? Oh yeah. So can I get another show of hands of how many of you see stories of bad kids acting up on Facebook? Well, I'm sure many individuals would say, oh, that kid, he just needs a good um, spanking to straighten him out. But the answer seems to be a bit more complex than that. Although many individuals believe a child's behavior is ref a reflection upon their parents, oftentimes this may not be the case. Countless kids cannot control their behavior due to problems with their mental health. So what can parents do when there is nothing they can do to help their own children? Well, I have a personal story, for example. So, flashback to July 6, 2016. Maya was working at a vacation Bible school at our local church. And that's where she met a little boy from a daycare bus named Brayden. Now, let me tell you, in her own words, Maya described Brayden as a little stinker. But the mischievous ones were always her favorite. The daycare director later informed Maya that he was looking with his step-grandmother, who was um, placing him up for adoption. So, about 6 p.m. that night, the step-grandmother, Brayden, and his little sister were all in my aunt's house. So, excitement soon filled their home after attending many classes less than a year later. Their family of four quickly turned into a family of six. This sounds like the American dream to many, right? Within a short period of time, some red flags began to arise. Brayden soon began to have frequent outbursts, including screaming, hitting, kicking, and biting. Despite these problems being persistent at home, it was also taking place elsewhere. The school began calling every day, complaining about destructive classroom behavior. In the last three years, he has ravaged many classrooms. Just last week, a child had to go to the emergency room due to a severe bite mark. One day, he climbed to the top of the jungle gym and threatened to jump off and kill himself at nine years old. Can you imagine? All the while, the problems at home were even worse. From the time he set the house on fire, twice, to the time he and a friend shot through a neighbor's window with a BB gun. Therapist after therapist came up with different diagnoses, although coming up with no solution. There were recommendations to put him in a local residential group home, but he was denied because the issues were too extensive. There is a facility in Austin, but not only is it too full, but the insurance won't cover the full cost. The only option that seems to be left for my aunt is to turn his rights back over to the state so he can get the financial and mental help he needs. I could certainly go on and on, but I'm sure many of you get the picture. Unfortunately, these stories like my younger cousin are isolated incidents, or they, nor are they limited to children who have been placed in the system. In fact, one out of every 10 kids suffer from mental disturbance. As many individuals struggle with this issue, what can parents or guardians do to aid these people? There does not seem to be any solutions other than placing them in group homes, not only to keep the individual, but the family safe themselves. In recent years, there have been many cases of mass shootings all over the world. One prime example was the shooting of Sandy Hook. Um, a mentally disturbed man, young man, killed his mother and then proceeded to go to, to an elementary school and commit horrendous acts upon these children. This was not the first time that he had shown violent actions, though. As throughout his childhood, many people that knew him would describe him as troubled. Evidently, there was something going on with him at a very young age. Oftentimes, these people commit these crimes, have documented mental health issues, like the shooter of Sandy Hook. Could there have been a solution for him to prevent these atrocious actions? I believe so. Virginia State Senator Craig Deese described his words to his son Gus, who also suffered from mental health issues, stating how he feared he would one day reside in a jail cell or even homeless. He went on to say that he would have preferred either of those two options as opposed to what he was dealing with now. His son later went on to stab his own father and then proceeded to take his own life. Deeds goes on by illustrating that if he, a well-known politician, cannot receive the help for his own son, how could a normal person? It seems the only option for parents is to sign over their child's rights to the state. It seems very far-fetched, but what else is there to do when they are unable to afford the help their child needs? This is very difficult when the group homes are unable to help because they do not have the resources either. So what is there left to do when there are no room in expensive homes if they, can't, if they can even be paid for? The shortage of these places draws all the way back to the 1960s 
when funding for mentally ill patients was cut significantly. At the time, there were 600,000 beds, as opposed to today, where there are only 60,000. When the mental health of individuals is put up to the four-way test, the results are as follows. Is the mental health crisis the truth? This is not up for debate. The statistics speak for themselves. 17.1 million kids in America have or have been diagnosed with a psychiatric disorder. This is more than the number of children with cancer, diabetes, and AIDS combined. Is it fair to everyone concerned? This question is answered when looking at the staggering number of violent incidents that take place not only in our classrooms, but also as the people with mental illnesses enter the workplace and start their own families. The cycle will just continue. Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Fortunately, yes. By implementing a way for individuals to seek help, it would lead to less violence around the country. Almost every time there is a mass shooting somewhere, the government has had a past with violence and has been diagnosed with a mental disorder. Time after time, we watch the news about a mass shooting. Nobody is shocked to learn the identity of the shooter. Nobody is scratching their head and asking how this happened. The general consensus of the, how the, how the perpetrator is that everyone knew it was just a matter of time. If we can reach those people long before a tragedy, not only will it affect the goodwill of everyone, but we can teach those people the skills necessary to build relationships and maintain friendships. Lastly, will it be beneficial to all concerned? Indeed it will. As previously stated, the problem not only affects those who are suffering from the issue, but their friends, family, and everyone else as well. This does not need to be shouldered on just the parents of the children who have these issues. It is way too heavy of a load that stretches way beyond and confines the walls within these families' homes. We all need to do better. Let me restate that. It is vital for our country as a whole to do better. More funding is absolutely necessary to set up more resources for these children in need. As one can see, the mental health crisis in the United States is truly horrifying. Many parents are left with no options other than to give up their own child just so they can get the help they need. I truly believe more funding needs to go back to the mentally disturbed individuals and offer more places for them to seek attention. I think it is unfair for the patients who are mentally disturbed as their own parents do not even know what is going to happen to them. If they are offered the help, then it will definitely be beneficial to everyone involved. This includes the patients, their families, and overall everyone in society. Therefore, if the government funds mental health institutions like they used to, then the mental health crisis will be in a much better place today. Okay, great job. One more. Do we have number two? Ready? Okay. <coughs> have we all noticed something recently? And I'm not talking about the latest movie or the new scandalous news that ravages our media as our presidential lace comes up. I'm talking about a pandemic that's ravaging our country specifically. And I understand we do have the coronavirus going around, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something a little bit more serious. It's been here for decades. I'm referring to the war on drugs. The war on drugs was what started as a movement to help bring stabilization to the community of America has ended up causing the deaths of millions. But I believe that if we apply the rotary four-way test not only can we identify the root of this problem, but how we can solve it effectively and efficiently. The first question of the Rotary four-way test is, is it the truth? And the truth of the matter is, is that this has been a problem for ever since it started. On June 18, 1971, President Richard Nixon initiated the war on drugs as a way to bring stabilization to the community of America. But this had the complete opposite effect. Drug death tolls rose sporadically, and drug abuse increased throughout the ages. Saying no drugs, no problems, is a lot easier said than done when the war on drugs has brought nothing but mass incarceration, corruption, political destabilization, and many drug-related deaths. The second question of the Rotary Test, is it fair to all concerned? And the truth of the matter is, is that it's not. We spend billions of dollars every single year to stop the import and export of drugs. But we only have a 1% efficiency rate. What we don't understand is that we have to reduce the demand instead of the supply. A great example of this is most recently our government tried to crack down on the regulation of crystal meth. 
So what they did is they cracked down on the chemicals used to make crystal meth. However, while yes, this did stop large, big corporations from making quote-unquote meth, what this did is opened up the door for thousands of small-scale operations. People were making crystal meth right in their homes. And this increased drug-related drug deaths more so than the bigger operations. You could easily compare this to the Prohibition Act that happened you know, a while back ago. <laughs> when, people made it, when they made it illegal to consume alcohol, what did people do? They just consumed harder liquor quicker because they were denied less effective types. You compare that now to the drugs. Yes, we want to decrease drug-related abuse by 100%. But until then, do we let people do things like nicotine, or do we let them overdose quicker on heroin and cocaine? Many problems associated with drugs are actually associated with the war on drugs itself. The US has 5% of the world's population, but 25% of the world's prison population. And that's a lot of people in prisons for the US alone. And most of these people are in prison because of drug-related crimes, so to speak. And minorities do suffer the most because of this. Statistically speaking, a white kid is more likely to abuse drugs, but a person of color is 10 times more likely to be arrested on false drug accusations. So not only do we have to reform our governments and state governments, but we also have to reform how we look at people whenever we pull them over. But this could easily be solved if we just put some thought into our actions. The third question can be answered by my solution. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? There is a solution that is cost-effective and works. In the 1980s, Switzerland had an outbreak of heroin and HIVs. Over 95% of their population had some form of HIVs or were doing the drug heroin itself. Now what the government did is they took a fraction of the billions that we spend every single day and they used it in a more better way. They reformed themselves. They built rehabilitation centers for these addicts. And these addicts were provided with clean needles and high-grade heroin and safe places to do heroin. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, isn't that counterproductive? Like, that's not what we wanted. But the results were astounding. Doctors were able to monitor these patients and slowly wean them off of the drug itself. And after a few years, two-thirds of their population were able to return to society with social workers and be able to have stable jobs and stable lives. So there is a way that we can do this cost-effectively and cheaply if we just looked into it. The fourth question, will it be beneficial to all concerned? I think that answers itself when you compare it to Switzerland. Switzerland had great results and we have been trying to do it here in America. However, if we just monitored it a little bit more closely, we could achieve what we wanted, which is a drug-free nation. And as for the prisoners, I believe that they should go through what's known as a cold detox, which is essentially something to help them have the drugs out of their system quicker. And if we provide them with social workers, then they'd be able to lead better stable lives and not have to rely on the use of drugs. Prohibition has led to a system that has bulldozed human rights, cost large amounts of money and human misery, all for an unobtainable goal. After 40 years of fighting, it's time that we move on from the war on drugs and do something better for our country and for the future of our nature and our children. Thank you. <laughs> no, I would have come hunched out for those. Okay, I would like at this time the judges to head to the boardroom to deliberate, please. Thank you for your, all of your participation, judges. They will be out shortly with some results. Okay, um, at this time, I'm gonna take a few minutes. We've got a couple of different things that we need to do. I've got a, oops, I forgot one down there. Uh, I would like to um, invite, David, would you like to come up and give your first presentation? Okay, Connie Pettit, would you come up, please? Yeah, yeah, this one's working. Connie, we believe in what you do. Yay. The board. And we, the board and their uh, uh, 
um, they made a decision to give win uh, again this year five hundred dollars to to use as you see fit. And most of us know what you do, but let's uh, let's uh, allow you to a few minutes to tell us more, maybe in detail, or some challenges you got on the horizon. This will help with. Sounds good. Thank you. You know, when I listen to these young students talk about mental health, um, it is a problem that we see on a regular basis of women in need as well. Are you trying to take a picture? No. Y'all got to get up higher and you're going to block There? There you go. I'm getting it all in the chair. We'll, we'll just scoot down we'll in scoot a minute. Down. You, talk. you just hold it and talk. Okay. okay. I'm good. Um, well, mental health is something that not only affects students, but it also affects the women and, um, and gentlemen that come to our shelter. So not all of them, but I, I would imagine it's got to be at least 40 to 50 percent of them. So mm -hmm. I know that's a staggering number, but if you think about it, we're, we have a population of people that a lot of times are homeless when they're using those types of drugs, those street drugs and such. And so one of the things that happen to them is they get abused on the street. So then they're coming to our door and we're gonna be able to serve them. But I agree with you, um, both of you, not that anybody's asking me to judge, but I agree we do need more mental health, um, you know, services that are available, social work services. So that is what we do. We're a social work agency. So we also are providing counseling for these victims of domestic violence. Um, we, are, we have a 40 bed shelter and um, we stay full all the time. Doesn't necessarily mean 40 beds are full, but our shelter rooms are full that have the beds. And, um, you know, Rotary has been a big support system for women in need, not only with, like with this check, which will be very helpful for us, but most recently you all had created a play area for our children. It gets used every day that's not raining. <laughs> and it is really um, a really wonderful asset to, our, um, to have for our children. Um, we see a lot of children, a lot of families come into our shelter that have children. And um, so obviously that's kind of a, a hard piece, but we have children's advocates that work with them to try to help them get to that place of well-being as well. Um, a lot of community resources here, um, you talked about Hunt in the hospital, would they help us with a tobacco grant? And you would, um, interestingly, this is a very um, significant grant for us because what it does is it doesn't fund any of my employees but what it does is it goes right to the clients so if they need dental work which a lot of times they do if they need eyeglasses or if they need um, non-narcotic prescriptions that's what we are able to utilize and so um, I don't know if I should say the dollar amount but it's a significant dollar amount of money that we are honored and, and blessed to receive. So it isn't just one agency or one person that can do this work. It does take a collective group of people. My daughter just took the position as CEO over at Glen Oaks. And so as you're talking about mental health, I'm like, OK, she's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> and so, That's going to be a tough one. <laughs> it is. It is. And um, she's got a good vision. And she's just um, probably from a person center. Um, perspective. And so I think that if we are going to make a difference and um, have inroads working with people with mental health issues or domestic violence victims, we have to recognize that they're human beings just like us. And they just need those services that um, can help them become stable. Yes. Okay. All right, we've got to scoot over so he can see which that is. Me and Connie's face. Yeah. <laughs> Both. There we go. Well, I could, I could either get her or not see the chat. One, two, three. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. We love you. Okay, now I would like to invite up my student of the month. And um, Michael, are you going to, who is that? Who, who's my student? Over here. Okay. I don't know. I just look at the. <laughs> okay, come on up. Down here, up here. Hi, um, I'm Adrian Emerson. I'm here on behalf of Heath Jarvis, principal at the high school, um, to present our student of the month, Josh Allen. And um, Josh has been a student of mine since he was in ninth grade. He's a senior now. Um, so Mr. Jarvis thought it would be appropriate for me to come in and speak. So Josh actually was supposed to give me a little resume so I could speak about him. And when he handed it to me, he said, I'm going to give this to you, but I'm pretty sure you know everything on it. 
except maybe my dad's name. And it, that was true, I didn't know his dad's name, so. But I did know everything else on here. Um, so I just wanna speak a little bit about um, Josh and his um, tenure at Greenville High School. Um, he's been in GISD since seventh grade. He came from the Phoenix School, and one of the biggest reasons that he transferred um, was to be in the robotics program here in Greenville, and I'm actually um, in charge of the robotics program at Greenville. Um, so I've known Josh since he was in ninth grade, and um, since he came to the school, he's had such a significant impact on the program. Uh, he immediately jumped in and learned how to do um, all things design and mechanical, and has helped us um, build world-class robots uh, for the past four years. Um, but not just in the robotics program, uh, Josh is also a huge supporter of the solar car program and has also participated in Boy Scouts since he was a kid. Um, he's always in one of the three shops at the high school, either the automotive shop working on his car or his motorcycle, the robotics shop working on robots, or the solar car shop working on solar cars. Um, so he, um, he's a wonderful kid and he's done a lot of good things. Um, and next year, uh, and actually while he's been at Greenville, he was a solar car national champion and a robotics world champion. Um, so you can see the impact he's had on the programs there. So Josh is leaving us next year, which is sad, but we're happy for him and we can't wait to see what he does in the future. And he's actually gonna be studying um, aerospace engineering at Embry-Riddle University in Florida. So we're really proud of him. Wow. Josh, I am so thankful you just scoot right over here, right over here. There you go. I'm so thankful to have you here visiting Rotary, and you know because of kids like you, that's why we do the things that we do, so we can make sure that there's always you know scholarship money and and presentations like this. But more importantly, I hope that one day you come back here to your hometown and become a part of the Rotary Club. And congratulations. Wow. Okay, I have a few announcements uh, that I'm going to make while they're still back there. Are y'all back? Are they back? Back. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and do your thing first, please? Okay, this is my brother. That's better. All right. So great job. Those are some great speeches. Did you guys enjoy that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good job. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for your time and doing that. Uh, Graham mentioned um, something that would be beneficial for you guys to know. We don't give them topics to write on. We don't give them topics to speak about. They choose those and they apply the four-way test to that um, as they see fit. So these are things that these students have worked on and that they've done. So. Um, now what we'll do is announce is tell you a little bit about these students and let them share a little bit about themselves as well. So um, let's just go in order. Cohen, you want to come and introduce yourself and your guests with you today? My name is Cohen Goggins. I am a student at Falls High School and today I have my mother and then my principal is also here to support me. Um, what grade are you? I'm a junior and I play varsity football, basketball, track. I'm a part of the Spanish club, beta club, and peer assistance and leadership. Yeah. Great job. Eddie, you want to come up and introduce yourself to everyone? Hello, my name is Eddie Yanez, and here with me today is my wonderful teacher, Ms. Emerson, and my best friend, Josh. <laughs> I am a senior here at the Google High School. I'm president of the student body. I am also an FFA treasurer, um, treasurer for the National Honor Society, president of my foreign language honor society, involved with the peer assistance leadership program, key club, and varsity soccer. So that's me. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, guys. I'm sure your schools are proud of you. You represent them well. Thank you for coming and speaking with us today. Um, as I told you both, they're already winners. The uh, Greenville Rotary Club is proud to um, provide sponsorship to these students for um, coming today and taking part in this. 
And um, so, Cohen, you are our second place at $300. And uh, you got much more room that you get to grow into next year. And we're excited to see you come back and do that again. So, you did a great job. So, Eddie, you get to be our first place at $500 and go on to district. And represent the club and um, your school as well. So the judges um, would like to share things for both of you guys individually after our meeting's over so that um, you can grow on that next year and you can take that with you to district. Thank okay? You. All right. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. Yes, that was a fantastic job by both of you and both of you are wonderful representation for our club. So I appreciate that. Uh, a couple of announcements. Keith Burns has one thing. Where did he go? He left. He left. Okay. Um, I think what he was going. Or, oh, he's the one that said it. Stand up. Don't. Did you hear that? I've been living in the hospital for two days. Don't mess with me today. <laughs> Just wanted to say to everybody, um, we are having our second of three. Bring a guest day for next Wednesday. Uh, it was kind of a short notice since we had Chili Fest last week. We didn't get to kind of have a running start into it. But uh, next week, please focus on bringing a guest to this, to this meeting. We are looking for potential members. We are trying to grow and help Katie during her presidential year get the citations that uh, Rotary has set forth for her. We're doing well, but we're still behind. We've had a lot of um, drops, resignations, people move, so on and so forth this year. So we are... Uh, several members down as far as a net one. We've gained, uh, we, we, we've um, achieved a few of the citation uh, uh, marks that we're aiming for, but the plus one is what we're still working toward. So we need more guests, and we need those guests to turn into members. So next week is bring a guest day, and then we'll have one more in April, and then Katie's year winds up at the end of June. So Plus, look at how awesome this club has. I mean, we're just rolling right along, and we're totally awesome. So who wouldn't want to be a part of this? May I plug next week's speaker? Focus on bringing somebody May I plug next week's speaker? And who are they supposed to contact so we know numbers from um, yeah, I would like to know if you've got um, if you've got a guest, if you would just text me or uh, Keith so that you for sure are going to be bringing a couple of guests so that we can know. Last time I asked for 20 extra meals and I think we had plenty, but it, I need to know if we need to request extra meals. So if everybody in this room is going to invite two people, we need to know that. Let, let me plug next Go week's ahead. speaker. Uh, in order hopefully to assist next week, bring a guest day. We've got a former congressman, nationally known speaker, that's going to be here uh, next Wednesday. Lieutenant uh, Colonel Allen B. West will be here speaking. Uh, I've heard him speak before. He's an engaging speaker, and he'll do a great job. So bring your guests. They will certainly um, uh, will enjoy the presentation. Okay, just a couple of more announcements I wanted to make. Uh, Children's Advocacy Center, we, we are going to be paying for two teams to bowl in their strikes for tykes, uh, like we do every year. And Rich Carter, who is looking at me funny over there, has agreed to be the uh, team for head team lead for the actual knows how to bowl team, and then we'll have the other team. Okay, so tell me which team that you want to be on, or go talk to Rich. Uh, we need to get two two teams together for that. Um, uh, when is, do you know when it starts for tykes? March 27th. Okay. Good. Speaking of March 27th, the very next day on March 28th, we are going to have the Rotary Gala. This is the uh, end polio now gala. So you saw how much that we have to bring to the gala. We've got a couple of seats left if anybody in um, Rotary wants to go to this gala. We've got, uh, we paid for a table of 10. And I know uh, Roxanne said she's already heard from some people that want to go. So if you want to go to the gala on March 28th, that evening at Edison's in downtown Dallas, please raise your hand and she's going to come by and get your information from you. Um, I'll do this one next week because it's already past time. I want to make an announcement to the club. Um, we have been working for months. Uh, one particular individual has been working very diligently for months to get our lineage going. We've got a president-elect in Larry James, but we didn't have a president nominee. 
or a uh, president designate, and at least one of those individuals is here today. So I would like to announce formally to the club that your president nominee is Debbie Sickles. And she's already rolling her eyes. Hey, you don't have to do auction during that year. Um, and our president designate is Karen Thomason. So thank you for both of you ladies stepping up. I appreciate it. Uh, I know that everybody's getting up to go, but I would ask, I would like to ask right now. This video has been brought to you by Juice 34. Juice is your community-owned provider for electric, internet, cable TV, and true local programming.